welcome to Cecil TV's 30 at 6. I'm Allison Donnelly, and today is Monday, March 12th. Hey, and Rob. I'm Rob Chernside, and I'm glad to be here because we're coming up on St. Patty's Day yes, this weekend. Yes, we are. What are you doing? I've already brought my inner leprechaun out. <laughs> How about you? Um, I don't know. I know that Minahanes is having its annual Irish breakfast. There's also a 5K in Elkton, I believe. And you're running? I might run. I haven't, I haven't signed up to run, but I might. Cool. Well, I hope we have good weather, and I'm sure everyone will be Irish for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Tonight we begin the 30 at 6 news segment with some important news of our own. Beginning next Monday, March 19th, 30 at 6 can be seen at 6 p.m. every weekday evening on Comcast Channel 190. It's a great leap forward for us, and we encourage new and existing viewers in both Cecil and Harford counties to tune in. Tomorrow night, Charlestown will be swearing in three newly elected members of the town board. Jeff Fields, Patricia Clements, and Lou Wood were the top vote recipients out of five candidates. County officials were looking for answers when they paid a visit to the Conowingo Dam on March 8th. After numerous reports of abnormally high amounts of debris built up at the dam, the contingent, which included County Executive Alan McCarthy and Director of Administration Al Wine, met with Exelon officials who explained that normal efforts to remove debris have been hampered by high winds and increased rainfall. Exelon says that spill conditions have persisted for 22 days, during which time debris removal by either boat or crane becomes dangerous. On March 17th, the Susquehanna Workforce Network will be holding a summer youth job fair for people ages 16 to 24 at the Susquehanna Workforce Center at 1201 Technology Drive in Aberdeen, Maryland. Several businesses will be on to meet with applicants. It runs from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And finally, the Cecil County Department of Public Works begins a period of public comment regarding the replacement of the Mechanics Valley Road CSX Bridge. This federally funded project includes extensive work to roads, utilities, and adjoining parkland and can be expected to interrupt traffic and impact the surrounding area for a period of time. Comments can be submitted in writing to the Cecil County Department of Public Works until March 28th. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? Elkton attorney Kevin Urich is running for Cecil County State's attorney. In June, he will face two other Republicans, Amanda Bessick and Carl Fockler. Kevin, thanks for being here. Thank you, Allison. So why are you running for state's attorney? I don't need to concentrate on my career anymore. I want to concentrate on the needs of the citizens. It's time for action, to lay a strong foundation that citizens can build upon to create an expression of hope. I have no doubt that with my experience, my enthusiasm, and my passion for humanity, I can bring pe people together and make Cecil County a place where the citizens look towards the future with hope. So could you tell our viewers a little bit about the role of the state's attorney's office? I feel like a lot of people don't know. It's a governmental office that's a legal office. It's responsible for basically criminal matters in the county. Every county has a local state's attorney that's elected locally and is responsible for making decisions about what is a crime, what, how should it be charged, handling it in court, uh, and then ultimately taking it to disposition or sentencing. Mm -hmm. So it's entirely legal, entirely dealing with criminal prosecution matters, dealing with Cecil County. So I wanted to ask you a question about the Justice Reinvestment Act, or the JRA, that went into effect this past October. The, the JRA um, require, or minimizes sentences for low-level drug offenders and um, requires that money spent to incarcerate offenders be redirected or reinvested um, to rehabilitation and mental health treatment. Um, you've commented that the though you have you support rehabilitation um, in a lot of 
in a lot of ways that you feel that the JRA is a is a one size fits all sort of policy. It Can you explain oh, that sorry. a little? That's okay. It con concentrates entirely upon rehabilitation mm -hmm. for people associated with certain crimes. It has reduced the penalty so substantially that in effect, if that's what you're dealing with and you're looking at someone who's a threat to society, you have nothing that you can do to protect society because now possession of heroin, for example, which used to carry up to four years, could carry up to eight years if they had a prior conviction, mm -hmm. now has a maximum of one year and under the guidelines for that, they're only supposed to get one quarter uh, as an actual incarceration. Mm -hmm. So it takes away from the prosecutor and the court the ability to distinguish between people for whom rehabilitation is an asset and who will benefit from it, and people who are recidivists, who are predators, who are a dangerous society. Sometimes we don't catch the bad guys on the big crimes like distributing drugs. We might catch them with possession of drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, But we know that's someone who's a danger because we know they're selling drugs, they're in the, near the school grounds or they're near the parks and they're selling or they're out in various of the communities where drug use is rampant in Cecil County and we no longer have teeth that we can use to take them out of action. So you ha are facing three other or two other Republicans in the June primary. So Cecil County voters have a choice. Um, what distinguishes you from your, your opponents? Well, Allison, all of them have shown that they have the courage to run, to stand up for what they believe in. And truthfully, when everything is said, we're really not in opposition to each other. What the public must ask is, as a county, are we able to risk four years on someone who has not had decades of experience, has not had hardships, trials, the pain of victims? Can we risk a person without decades volunteering in the community, listening to people, finding out what their concerns are. Listening to others is the only way to build an enterprise of hope to amplify citizens' voices. These are some of the differences people will see in the coming months. I ask the citizens to allow me to follow their lead in building an expression of hope for Cecil County. Okay, thanks for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Oh no, the furnace is on the fridge again! This time I'm calling the new guy. Wow, he's here already? At your service! There you go! Mission accomplished! Uh, uh, our house is nice and warm again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome! You're welcome! Just go to moonairinc.com! Pull out of the show, show. All right, Cindy Cantor, welcome again to 30 at 6. We changed our name yes, since thanks, last Rob. time you were here. You're that Cecil Rocks lady, right? I was Cecil Rocks lady, yes. From Parks and Rec? Yes. And you're never one to rest on your laurels or just be sitting on your rock, right? No, we don't. What's the new thing? The new thing that we're here to talk about is Club Bulldog, um, Northeast Middle School's new after-school program. It runs Monday through Thursdays from about 2.40 to 5 p.m. We started it at the school. We were given a classroom and that adjoins the gymnasium, split the gym into two sections. The kids have access to the stage. We do karaoke. Oh, nice. We uh, transformed this classroom into a, into a gaming room with modular seating and flat screen TVs and PS4 stations. So the kids have options. They can come in and game. They can chill out. They can play what we call savage dodgeball. They can play basketball. Wait, wait, wait a second. What is savage dodgeball? Such dangerous. It's just that. Uh, we have these great dodgeballs that are really lightweight. Right. So we called it Savage Dodgeball just to get the kids' interest going. And sure enough, um, they all came to see if they can savagely play <laughs> dodge, dodgeball um, with awesome. one another. So, so they can come hang. Um, it's an opportunity for them Mondays through Fridays. They don't have to um, come. 
they can go home or they can come hang out with us. So we call it a want to, not a have to. And they don't have to do their homework if they don't want to. Not right? there, no. We like them At to home, do their homework. Yeah, yeah. Right. But but no, not necessarily there. It's actually pre pretty chaotic. Um, kids that age being kids, uh, they're loud. Music's loud. Games are loud. Basketball's loud. Dodgeball's loud. Karaoke's loud. So there, it's a pretty chaotic scene. And um, today we had 85 kids. That's pretty good. That's great. That's actually awesome. Now, uh, obviously they have announcements over the loudspeaker advising the kids that they can do this. And if anybody out there has any questions, any kids or parents, who would they contact? We have on our website. We describe the program at www.cecilrec.com, and the school. We are we are doing this in conjunction with the school. Um, Parks and Rec sat down with people from um, the Board of Education (CCPS) and discussed what we could do to provide for these students. Uh, how we would staff it. So Parks and Rec runs the program, staffs the program. CCPS provides uh, transportation, which right. these kids at five o'clock hop on a bus and go home, which is awesome. And, um, and then again, Northeast Middle School, uh, we're guests there. So we work very closely with um, Denise Sopa, who's the principal there, and she gives us the space. So Always something new and innovative from Parks and Rec. Yes. What's we coming like up this, so. this warm weather season? Warm weather season is lacrosse season here in Cecil County. That is for us. And, and we have a big flag football program. And we're, we're gearing up for yoga and kayak tours and things like that. Uh, we, have a whole, we have a whole schedule of offerings that will be coming up in the spring. And we're looking forward to the nice weather to roll it all out. I want to keep my eyes and ears open on your website because I have a kayak that's never been in the water. Mm-hmm. Well, our kayak tours, um, we have a guy who brings his own and right. he takes everyone, he takes everyone in all our little waterways, awesome. which is awesome. Well, anything that we missed? I don't think so. Thank you very much. I look forward to your next exciting new thing and lacrosse season, and I'm going to look for a Cecil Rock out <laughs> there, too. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Why should you advertise on Cecil.tv? Because it is a totally new and unique way to reach the thousands of viewers that watch our programming. Plus, you'll be helping us grow as we expand our coverage. We have exciting plans and your business or organization can be part of it. You will find our packages and rates to be refreshingly affordable and we'll work with you to create a fresh and dynamic ad that says and shows what your business is about. Ask us how to get your commercial produced for free. So contact us on our website, Cecil.tv, or send an email to info at Cecil.tv. Thank you. And now, back again, a favorite of Cecil TV, <laughs> Del Lord. Del, welcome. Thank you, Rob. You Thank you very much. Big old guitar. Uh, yeah, the old jumbo uh, Gibson Epiphone uh, uh, SJ Super Jumbo. Yeah. And it's got a super sound, I know. You've got three songs for us tonight? Yeah, they're all songs that I wrote myself. And the last one, uh, it's called The Waterbug Dance. I changed my voiceover on that to make it even more comical because it's a comical song. Get a little buggy on it? Yeah, get a little buggy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> now, we were talking uh, on the way up um, about the rustic life you used to live up there north of Chad's Ford. And yeah. How you had to go up in the woods and get your own your drinking water and everything? Yes, yes. Uh huh. Up into the spring house and then um, had to go down to the creek and where I learned how to swim at and learn how to do a lot of fishing down there. And um, it was very, very old, old time way of being raised. The really old fashioned way, yeah. So you come by that old time music naturally. Yes, I always loved the sound of that old timey traditional country and bluegrass. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you play a few songs for us? Oh, I would love and to. And I hope we can see you maybe this year. You're from Rising Sun. Yes. At the Rising Sun, at the Sun Fest. That would be great. Yes. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. That's well, it. Well, um, the first song I would like to do is, uh, these three songs are all songs that I did write myself. And the uh, first one is, 
a newer song that I just wrote in January of this year. Um, uh, it's called How Rising Sun Got Its Name. And um, I made a copy of it. I recorded it. Uh, and I made a copy of it and gave it to the uh, Rising Sun Historical Committee. And uh, so, anyway, I'll do that for you now. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Howdy, friends. This is Del Lord, and I'm going to do a song right here, and it's called How Rising Sun Got Its Name. So all of these songs that you're going to hear tonight are songs that I originally wrote myself. And uh, here it is, How Rising Sun Got Its Name. town it's called rising sun it has its roots in history just below the mason dixon line it got its name from an old tavern back in colonial days where people would come and rest a while before they went on their This next song right here is um, also, uh, as I was saying, is a song that I wrote, and uh, it's called I Love You So Much, and it goes like this. You came into my life in the darkest days I've known. You stayed with me through thick and thin, and now I call you my own. No matter what life brings, as we to face the years, I'll always want you by my side. I love you so much, dear. I know that you've been hurt by some other gossip thrill. Other ones have hurt you so I feel your pain, my dear No matter what life brings As we to face the years I'll always want you by my side I love you so much, dear You came into my life in the dark days I know you stayed with me through thick and thin and now I call you my own no matter what life brings as we to 
face the years I'll always want you by my side I love you so much dear and now for this third song right here I'm going to explain to you I changed my voice over on it to make it more comical it's a comical song, a comedy song that I wrote, and it's called The Waterbug Dance. So here it is. You know, friends, in this day and age, things are awful tough. And sometimes you feel just like a bug. And that's why I wrote and made up this song to relieve the stresses and tensions, so sing along. Here we go. Taste, taste, and tusk, tusk, a word just like a little water bug. <laughs> taste, taste, and tusk, tusk, let's do the water bug dance. Taste, taste, and tusk, tusk, a word just like a little water bug. Taste, taste, and tusk, tusk, let's do the water bug dance. Now here's how you do it. You throw your arms out in front of you, then you strut all around. And make a great big circle, and make your own bug sound. Then you take your feet and twist them all around. And as you go on your way, you make your own bug sound. Taste this and task task, a we're just like a little water bug. Taste this and tusk tusk, let's do the water buck dance. Taste this and tusk tusk, we're just like a little water bug. Taste this and tusk tusk, let's do the water buck dance. Thank you all for listening and watching.